So far, in the context of classification models, we have been talking about hard predictions. For example, in spam classification, we have been talking about predicting whether a given email or text message is spam or not spam. Very often, it's also useful to know soft predictions. That is, how confident our model is with a given prediction. In scikit-learn, most of the models have this information. And we can access this information using this method called PredictProba. Let's look at probability scores of logistic regression classifier for our test example. Here is our test example. I'm creating logistic regression object. I'm fitting it. And this is my hard prediction for our example. When we call predict, we get hard prediction. And the prediction in this case is Canada. Now let's get soft prediction using predict proba. What do we get here? We get these two numbers. Since we are working on a binary classification problem, we are going to get probability scores for both classes. This first score corresponds to class 0 and second score corresponds to class 1. Now what are our class 0 and class 1? Remember that this classes underscore attribute of logistic regression object gives us the order of the classes. It tells us which class is considered as negative and which class is considered as positive. In our case, our class 0 that is negative class is Canada and class 1 that is positive class is USA. So this first score corresponds to class Canada and this second score corresponds to class USA. And what are these scores telling us? This first score tells us that the model is 87% confident that the class is Canada. And since these are probability scores, these numbers should sum to 1. And because they sum to 1, one of these scores should be greater than or equal to 0.5. And the class corresponding to that score is going to be our hard prediction. How does logistic regression calculate these probability scores? Remember that in logistic regression, we calculate this raw model output by taking the weighted sum of feature values and adding the bias term to it. If we were doing linear regression, then this would have been our prediction. In case of logistic regression, we also apply a threshold. So we check whether this raw model output is greater than or equal to zero or not. If that's true, then we predict positive. If that's false, we predict negative. These are our hard predictions. We can also get soft predictions from these raw model outputs. To convert the raw model output into probability scores, instead of taking sine or instead of applying a threshold, we applied the sigmoid function. What is the sigmoid function? The sigmoid function squashes the raw model output from any number to the range 0 to 1. It does it using this formula 1 over 1 plus e to the minus x, where this x is our raw model output. When we apply this formula, we get a number in the range 0 to 1. And we can interpret this output as probabilities. Let's look at this sigmoid curve. How does it look like? It looks like an elongated S. On the x-axis, I have raw model output here. And on the y-axis, I have predicted probability score. What do we see here? Initially, as we increase the raw model output, the predicted probability score increases very, very slowly. So slowly that it almost looks like a constant. Then it starts to change faster and then more fast. Then it becomes slow again. And for larger values of raw model output, it's so slow that it almost looks like a constant. And note that this threshold of 0 corresponds to probability score of 0.5. 
So, if probability score is greater than or equal to 0.5, our hard predictions are going to be positive class. And if it is less than 0.5, our hard predictions are going to be negative class. Let's calculate the probability score by calling sigmoid on the raw model output for our test example. That's what I'm doing here. And this is our probability score. Now this probability score corresponds to the positive class. In our case, the positive class is the USA class. Now when we call predict proba on our example, these are the probabilities we get. This first probability corresponds to class Canada and second probability corresponds to class USA. And the nice thing now is that these probabilities that we calculated for the class USA, they match. So this is great. We exactly know how predict proba is calculating probabilities. Let's visualize probability scores for some examples from our cities dataset. In this table, I'm showing you actual Y, predicted Y, and corresponding prediction probabilities. Now, in most of the cases, in almost all cases, the actual Y and predicted Y agree with each other. That said, the model is more confident about its prediction in some cases than others. For example, in this particular example with index 127, both the predicted Y and actual Y are Canada. So they are agreeing with each other. But the model is not very confident about this prediction. On the other hand, in this example with index 187, both the predicted Y and actual Y are Canada and they agree with each other. And the model is pretty confident about this prediction. Let's quickly look at some cases where the model is least confident, most confident and overconfident. Let's start with least confident cases. Here are two examples. In both examples, our Y and Y hat, they agree with each other, but the model is not very confident about these predictions. The probability scores are close to 0.5. And if we plot these points, we see that these points are close to the decision boundary. So it makes sense that the model is not very confident about these predictions. Now let's look at a couple of most confident cases. In these cases, again, our Y and Y hat, they agree with each other, and the model is quite confident about these predictions. In the first case, for example, Y is USA, and our prediction is also USA, and the probability score for USA is 0 0.99. So model is very confident about this prediction. Similarly, for the second example, the probability score for Canada is 0 0.95. So again, the model is quite confident about this prediction. And if we plot these points, we see that these points are far away from our decision boundary. So it makes sense that the model is quite confident about these points. Now let's look at a couple of examples where the model makes mistakes. In both these cases, the actual Y is USA, whereas Y hat, the prediction, is Canada. And in both cases, the probability scores for Canada are quite high. So the model is quite confident about these predictions, but it made wrong predictions. And if we plot these points, what do we see? These points are somewhere here. The data points here are far away from the decision boundary and that's why our model was quite confident about its predictions. But these cities are likely to be part of Alaska. And our linear model is just dividing this feature space into two halves. This portion is Canada and this portion is USA. And this linear model is unable to capture that this part belongs to USA and not Canada. Here I'm showing you prediction probabilities with colors. For the cities which are close to the decision boundary, the model will be more uncertain about its predictions. But 
if the cities are far from the decision boundary, the model will be very confident about its predictions. So that's the overall idea of getting probability scores associated with predictions. Okay, so to summarize, with hard predictions, we only know the class. But with soft predictions, that is with probability scores, we know how confident the model is with certain predictions. And this is going to be really useful for us to debug our model or to understand our model better.